I think I did a pretty thorough job of explaining how elevator recall works and so now I want to get into elevator shunt trip. So the high level concept is that anytime you have a sprinkler head in either the elevator machine room, the top of the shaft, or in the pit, at least a sprinkler head above 24 inches off the ground, you need to disconnect power to the elevator before one of those sprinkler heads were to activate. Now there's a few ways you can do that, but the most typical way to do it is to have heat detectors within 24 inches of all the sprinkler heads that are set to a lower temperature rating than the sprinkler heads. So if your typical sprinkler heads 165 degrees, maybe you put a 135 degree heat detector within 24 inches of it or a rate of rise heat detector that will trip before the sprinkler head does and then you'll activate shunt trip. Now real quickly, I believe it's allowed to have the elevator recall to the floor on some sort of a battery power before or at least give it enough time to recall to the to you know its recall floor before shunt trip activates. I personally have never seen that. Um, from my experience once that heat goes the elevator trips instantly um, which I think is kind of crazy. I think it would be better to have it recall but you know in theory if you had a smoke up there too and it was an actual fire hopefully the smoke would trip first recalling the elevator then your heat detector would go then your sprinkler head. Um, so anyway I'm more focused on how you actually make that happen. Um, there's a newer way that I've seen the last couple years I've still only seen it a handful of times it's much simpler but the far more common way is the way that I'm going to explain it. Imagine this is an elevator machine room and we've got a couple things going on here. So on the left we've got what's called a shunt trip breaker which I'll explain. Then you've got an elevator controller that's usually right next to the actual hydraulic equipment um, and we're assuming it's a smaller building like it was a, um, you know, in this, in this slide here. Um, so let's assume it's a hydraulic elevator, which I guess doesn't really matter. We've got our recall relays here that are wired into the controller, um, but those have nothing to do with shunt. So those are going to do what they're going to do. And I, you know, I've drawn each one coming into the controller, but in reality, they'd be in their own 1900 boxes, which, you know, that all those control wires would be going through one pipe. All of this, this orange, yellow, brown uh, would all be in pipe. That's like assuming this is a 480 volt. Um, controller. Um, got a smoke detector, heat detector. And you'll notice the heat detector is very close to the sprinkler head. So again, this is all inside the elevator machine room. Um, and so the recall is drawn here, but it has nothing to do with shunt. So the way a shunt trip breaker works is it's got um, a set of terminals on there that if the breaker gets 120 volts on that set of contacts or on that coil it's going to trip the disconnect so you know it's passing all the voltage through to the controller right now but if it senses 120 volts on the the shunt trip contacts it's going to it's going to trip um, and that source of that power is separate from the shunt trip fr from the elevator power itself so assuming this is coming in from you know comad not directly but from you know the electric room whatever now we've got our we, now we've got a little breaker panel over here, and this is just like a regular. It could be a single phase or more commonly a you know a two phase um, breaker panel, but just like you'd have for lighting or whatever. So let's say we took our neutral and we ran our neutral wire to the neutral terminal of the shunt trip breaker, and then we took our hot and we ran it to the hot terminal. Well, as soon as we turn this breaker on, the elevator is going to shut down. This is going to activate the shunt trip, and it's going to disconnect the power from the elevator. It's going to shut down instantly, right? So how can we control that with our fire alarm system? Well, if we took, give me a second here, if we took a relay, the same relays we've been using for recall, and we interrupted the hot circuit with a relay well in theory that would work right so if we took our hot we came up here to common out of normally open because we don't want this normally energized until we tell it to right we'd come out of normally open 
Well, when we land on here, once this is told to activate, so we would map this relay to each of the heat detectors wherever there's a sprinkler head in the elevator. So top of shaft, bottom of pit, machine room, if there's all three, we can map all those to the same zone and then map that zone to this relay. And when this activates, it's going to pass this hot through and onto the shunt trip breaker. Well, that would work one time. And then the contacts would probably be welded or soldered shut because those relays are not designed to handle that much current. This is a cut sheet for the notifier FRM and you can see the highlighted area you get half an amp at 120 volts. So um, I actually thought it was the third, I don't know what the difference between those two is but uh, regardless it's not enough, it can't handle the load that you'd be putting on it. So the way you have to wire this it gets a little bit complicated to look at um, because there's a lot going on but if you take it one at a time it's not too bad so here's what we want to do we're going to bring into the picture a relay that I've used before and that is an MR this one's a 101. And the only difference between this and a 201, which I've mentioned a bunch, is that the 201 would have a second set of contacts. So you could use, you could control two circuits. You can use that and just not, you know, for this application, you can use it. You just wouldn't use the second set of contacts. But um, you don't need the second set. So we'll just use the 101 for now. But we don't have a way to control this with our fire alarm panel, right? The way these things work is once it gets voltage, um, the contacts change states and when it when it loses voltage they change states back and it's got four terminals on the bottom because it can be controlled by several different voltages um, it's got zero which is like the neutral or the negative and then it could do 18 slash 24 so like 18 to 24 volts on one terminal 115 I don't know why it's not 120 um, and then 230 I don't know why it's not 240 but regardless you can control it with any one of those voltages but you only can use one of them right so what we if we give this thing 120 volts it's going to activate the relay well but we can't control that with our fire alarm system right so we need that relay and we need the FRM so I'm going to try to draw this as cleanly as I can but as I said it, it gets a little bit messy so um, here's what I'm going to do we're going to take our neutral out of our neutral bar and we're going to assume that this is running through conduit and it goes into a junction box right here and there's a splice in this junction box so there's our neutral okay then we're going to take our hot wire and we're going to do the same thing so we're leaving our breaker this is just 120 volts right we're going up into the junction box and there's a wire nut so we got a big red wire nut here okay so we can run 120 volts through this relay I just showed you on this other screen it can handle 120 volts it just can handle very low current so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hot splice and one leg of it is gonna come up to common on the FRM okay and then the this FRM is going to turn on this MR101. But I'm going to use a different color for the switch leg. So let's use blue and come out of our FRM. It's probably going to be in the same pipe. And it's going to go to the 115 volt section of our MR101. Okay. Well, this needs a neutral still, so let's give it a neutral. So we're going to make our splice here. Um, I don't know how I'm going to draw that. You get the idea. I'm going to just take this and come right up here. Okay. So this does not have 120 volts currently because the contacts we use are normally open, and this relay is not activated yet, right? So it does not have 120 volts, but it's sitting there waiting. As soon as this FRM activates, it's going to get 120 volts okay well that's fine what we're gonna do next is take another splice out of this 120 
we went to common up here. We're going to go to common here. Oops, I didn't like the way that drew. So now we're on common at the top, right? So there's a there's one leg of the 120 sitting there. Then I'm going to use a different color. We'll use red out of normally open. And this is going to go all the way to our shunt trip breaker. So this does not have 120 volts on it until this MR101 activates, right? And then we obviously need a neutral there too. So out of the splice, this goes to our shunt trip breaker. So this looks like a mess and you have to look at it you know one wire at a time to make any sense of it and that's why I tried to bring each one of these components in one at a time so hopefully it makes sense now the first time I saw this I remember looking at the wiring diagram which wasn't color coded it was just lines and I didn't think it made any sense I thought that it was um, it was redundant like it didn't matter that you pass this that you pass the voltage through here to turn this on because it was the same source it was the same 120 but what I didn't realize this was you know years and years ago and I had to look at it for a while and really think about it before before it made any sense to me but um, what I didn't realize is even though there's 120 volts sitting at this FRM and then that same source of 120 volts is going to be you know high current turning on this the shunt trip breaker the only current passing through the relay our addressable relay is the current draw of one of these MR101s or MR201s, which is nothing. I, I should have had that pulled up the same way I had the FRM pulled up, but it's you know I think it's it's less than like it's less than 50 milliamps. I think it's it's almost nothing. And so that little orange pattern I just drew there um, is the only current that's passing through our relay, and so it's it's minimal. And then there's much more current passing through the MR101 going to the shunt trip breaker. So once our FRM activates, now this common normally open closes, right? Activates this, now these two close, and that passes the power to the shunt trip breaker and it kills power. Um, so that's not the end of it though. And, and those of you that have seen this on a wall, you probably are, you're, you're, <laughs> excuse me, you're probably used to looking at the three or sometimes four recall relays plus a shunt trip, plus one of these MR101s, plus another module and another 101, which adds to the confusion, but it's really pretty simple, and I'm going to get into that in the next video.